Most people don't look to the UK as sort of a hub for delicious food. Not the way that they look to places like Italy or France, but I'm willing to bet those people have never had a Sunday rose because if they did, they might look at the UK a little bit differently. Me, I was raised on Sunday roasts, um, especially during the winter. It's been a tradition that's been passed down um, in my family from generation to generation because my mom is English. Um, and it's something I've really always wanted to learn how to do so that when um, I eventually fly the nest, I can continue passing that tradition down. But it's never been something I've really prioritized doing. I feel like school or volunteer or work has always come before learning how to cook a roast. And I just can't justify spending an entire weekend in the kitchen learning how to do it. So when the Genius Hour project was um, introduced to us, I automatically thought this was a perfect opportunity to be able to justify cooking a Sunday roast because it's for a school project and learn how to do it as it's a skill I'll be able to have and pass down for generations. So this is basically where my journey begins. I'll really quickly tell you a little bit of the history of a Sunday roast, just so you know a little bit about it before we get started. Um, traditionally, it's pretty much just a piece of roast beef um, and surrounded by a couple different trimmings, including potatoes, often roast potatoes, um, Yorkshire puddings, which I'll tell you about in one second, um, and a couple different kinds of vegetables, and of course, gravy. So basically, it was popularized in the 15th century um, and was basically when people would come home from church on a Sunday, they would have this meal together. And back then, it was cooked over a fire, but of course now it's cooked in an oven. And it was accompanied by a Yorkshire pudding, which is basically kind of like a pancake, muffin, flaky, delicious bowl that you can uh, make all nice and um, soak up your gravy, basically. So back in the day, the Yorkshire pudding was actually served before you served the beef because it was made with really cheap and affordable ingredients. So the idea was fill up the guests on the cheap stuff and then you won't have to spend as much money on a big slab of roast beef. Now fast forward to today and all across the UK on Sundays, families and friends gather around the table honestly and they share a Sunday roast together. Whether it's in pubs or people's homes, it's really a tradition that has lasted since the 15th century, which is really incredible. And hopefully by me learning these skills, it will continue to last um, for more centuries in my own family. So now I'm gonna get into a little bit of the research with you. So the number one resource I used um, throughout this journey was my mom, because like I said, she is the master of the Sunday roast and it's through her family that the tradition has been passed down. So I thought, what better place to go than the source? Um, so I spent basically three out of the four Sundays in the kitchen with my mom, which was a really awesome but interesting learning experience. As you can probably imagine, it got a little hectic at times, especially because I'm not always the best at cleaning as I cook. Um, but in order to achieve my ultimate goal, which was to be able to prepare and plate the perfect Sunday roast from scratch for my family, which is my mom, my dad, my brother, and my sister, um, I first had to learn how to do each of the different components and then work on putting it all together at the end. So I divided it into three sections. The first week I learned how to do the sponge and custard. Um, the sponge is a treacle sponge, um, which is basically a steamed cake, um, that steams for about two hours and it is soaked in this delicious treacle. Um, it's like a, it's kind of like a maple syrup, but it's like a treacle syrup, which is really popular in baking over in the UK. Um, and custard, which I kind of cheated and used bird's custard powder, but it was a lot easier and really quick um, and simple. So that was my first week. And I decided to do it that way instead of sort of jumping into the deep end because I'm a really proficient baker, or at least I think so. Um, so I thought kind of by starting with baking before moving on to the cooking, um, things might go a little smoother. So that was week one. Um, week two, I learned how to do the meat and gravy. So I want to do it from scratch like my mom does. So she doesn't use packaged gravy from the grocery store. She uses the juices from the vegetables and the meat, so, um, the juices from the meat to make this delicious, rich gravy. So that's what I did week two. Um, and on week three, I learned how to do the Yorkshire puddings and um, the roast potatoes. So I kind of explained the Yorkshire puddings to you already but it's kind of a technical process. Um, you have to pre-make the batter and then sort of let it come down a little bit to room temperature. It's super easy batter to make. But while you're doing that, you also have to have in the oven for five minutes on really high heat, a muffin tin um, with kind of sort of half a centimeter of oil heating at the bottom. And then after five minutes, you take it out and you have to pour the batter really quickly into all of the little muffin holes. Um, and then after 20 minutes, you have these beautiful Yorkshire puddings. 
so that was kind of tricky but um, the roast potatoes were really easy all I had to do was um, parboil a bunch of it worked best with russet potatoes um, parboil a bunch of potatoes um, shake them in the colander so all the edges got kind of rough so there was more surface to roast and then I put them in a big tray with some oil and a little bit of rosemary which is kind of a good trick not a lot of people use rosemary um, and then I took them out after about an hour and a half two hours and they were beautiful um, so over the course of three weeks I kind of learned each different component of the meal I didn't really need to learn how to boil the vegetables because that was pretty easy and I knew about how long that took um, and then my last week I put it all together so I was independent in the kitchen um, and I basically wanted to practice timing so things like the meat takes about two hours and the potatoes take about two hours and the gravy you have to use the juices from the vegetables so you have to put the vegetables on at a certain time but you don't want to put them too on early because you don't want them to get cold but you need some of those juices and the juices from the potatoes to put in the gravy but you have to remember to save the potato juice to put in the gravy even though you parboil the potatoes about two hours before you did the gravy which is something I forgot to do both times um and then you have to have your cake on the stove steaming at the same time and that was basically my challenge for the last week um so yeah basically my research was hanging out in the kitchen with my mom um, and she sort of did it step by step and I recorded everything in a little book that I have here um, It's really sloppy because it was really on the go But the idea was to just jot down little notes of how everything worked how much time it needed what temperature it had to be at So that on the last day when I did it independently I could just really quickly reference and the nice thing about sort of doing it step by step is each week I was really able to focus on the one or two things that I was making that week so by the time I went back week four and had to do it all myself, I kind of remembered because I was really engaged in my learning through kind of the hands-on inquiry-based experience portion of it that I could really do it independently. I really didn't need to reference any of my material because I remembered it. It really stuck with me. So four weeks later, four Sundays later, and what what did I learn? What were my conclusions? What were my findings? Um, I ultimately learned how to plate and prepare the perfect Sunday roast I have to say my mom is an incredible teacher and it was a really really delicious meal that we just had on Sunday um one thing that I kind of haven't decided if I like or not is learning how much less scientific and precise cooking is to baking with baking you have really structured recipes and it's put in at this temperature take out at this temperature do this do that exactly this amount of baking soda or salt or and you, you kind of know as long as you follow the instructions to a T it'll probably come out pretty well cooking is a lot less scientific and it's more open to interpretation like the gravy it's just kind of like keep tasting it and if it needs a little bit of this throw it in if it needs a little bit of that toss it in um and that's kind of tricky because there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to get to the final destination you kind of have to work with it as you go until you have the experience to know exactly what to do so whether I like that or not I'm not sure I think that I'll learn to like that a little bit more as I become a little bit more familiar with cooking but um not having sort of a black and white recipe to follow was really tricky learning something else I learned is timing is not easy um the last week was absolute chaos in the kitchen um my family could hear me banging around from all levels of the house all rooms of the house it was chaos there was mess everywhere um, it's not easy because you have one kitchen and you think that you sort of have things moving but then you realize oh the pot that I'm using to keep that in because I'm boiling it in a second well I actually need it for this or oh no I need to have my sponge on but also my potatoes in the oven so I need to do that but then there's tons of stuff piling up in the sink so it's an absolute mess and the colander I need is dirty in the sink but I can't get at it because I need to make sure that this is in on time and that was really chaotic um, it's not as easy so when people prepare a delicious meal and make sure everything is ready and hot on time um, it's incredible um, I don't think I give people enough credit for everything coming out on time um, I only missed my um, deadline time by 10 minutes and that was kind of because everything was sort of still cooking so it did come out hot um, but in sort of the chaos of everything, I had to use 
um, a hob or like an element on the stove that was a little bit too big for the container that was cooking my broccoli. So I didn't really realize, but the flames were kind of licking up the side and heating up on the lid. So in the process of grabbing the lid off of the broccoli so that I could um, strain it and take the water out, I burnt my hand. Um, and then I had to call my sister in because she had to help me put sort of a bandage on it so I could keep going. Um, so you don't really realize how many things are whizzing through your mind at one time um, while you're cooking, especially if you don't have as much experience in it like I do. Baking, you just kind of put everything in a blender, put it in the oven and it comes out and you, it's all done. <clears throat> so what does the future hold? Um, I can confirm it definitely holds more Sunday roasts uh, cooked by me when I can nudge my mom out of the kitchen. Um, and it definitely holds a future of me really prioritizing considering the interests um, and passions of my students in my classroom. I think this project has reaffirmed um, my understanding of the importance of incorporating the passions and interests of our students in the, um, the material that we teach in order to engage and invest them um, in their learning. I've been really engaged and invested throughout this entire process because it's been something that I hold really near and dear to my heart. And I think incorporating things that my students hold really near and dear to their hearts, whether it's their culture or their favorite sports teams or stuff like that into my practice, um, I can definitely support student success in my classroom.